Hello everyone, Stu Hartenstein again from the Central Region Umpire Advisory Committee. We're excited to come back to you guys here and release this, our second video uh, that takes a look at following up to our 2021 focal points. If you remember back in March, the Central Region Umpire Advisory Com Committee shared five different focal points or five things we should think about as we work back on the diamonds here this summer. Uh, and as we went ahead and go through things, particularly last month, we released our first follow-up video here to these focal points. That video focused on taking advantage of the easy plays. We'll revisit that concept of taking advantage of the easy place today as we go through our second follow-up video and our focal point here today is to take a look then at proper use of eyes. In this video, which is our second follow-up to our 2021 focal points, we will, as I mentioned, focus on the concept of proper use of eyes as a yet another habit, another building block here, another fundamental building block in getting better on the diamonds this season. We'll first define what exactly is meant by proper use of eyes, identify some of the key situations where we need to use it, discuss ways to build this habit or this skill, and then finally understand the benefit of using our eyes properly on the diamonds. Let's go ahead and take a look and then at the proper use of eyes here and where exactly we can go ahead and use it. As I mentioned, this is our second follow-up video. The first one took a look at taking advantage of the easy plays, and taking advantage of the easy plays is yet again something that we will definitely come back to and circle back to as we talk about building the habit of proper use of eyes. Now, the first thing that we want to do here for our purposes is go ahead and define what exactly we mean when we say use our eyes properly. So what exactly is proper use of eyes? Well, all proper use of eyes is is an intentional process of using our eyes to gather and process all information necessary in order to go ahead and make a ruling. So again, what's important to note here in this definition is that it is an intentional process. It's something that we have to be committed to doing, and it's the usage of our eyes to allow ourselves to take the time, to slow down and take the time, to gather all information from a play that's necessary before we make a ruling and before signaling. Okay, So it's the intentional process of using our eyes to gather all information from a play before ruling or signaling. Now you may be asking, okay, well, when do we use this, this mechanic, this habit? When do we use proper use of eyes? Well, if you take time and start to think about what is required of you as an umpire to use your eyes properly, all of a sudden you're going to start to go ahead and make a very long laundry list of different types of situations that do require the proper use of eyes. So when do we use our proper use of eyes? The answer is on every single play, on every single pitch that we use. So this is ultimately uh, the, the paramount uh, building block, the paramount fundamental, the paramount habit that needs to be developed here in terms of doing a lot of things well on the diamond. Now, I asked you what exactly are some examples of these. So let's take a look at some of the examples that require us to use proper use of eyes. If we start to make a list, some of you guys may come up with these things. And the first example here is just going to be on catches. So if you think about it, take a look at the definition of a catch and what's required of a catch, right? The ball has to go into the glove, we have to confirm firm and secure possession, and then have voluntary release. Well, proper use of eyes allows us to watch the play happen and make sure that all criteria of the rules of a catch are met, again, before making the decision. And what you'll notice here is that when we go ahead and execute our proper use of eyes, it allows us to process all of those fundamentals or all those criteria in the rule. That number one, the ball was caught. That secondly, we have firm and secure possession. And then ultimately we have a voluntary release. That checklist is all then processed with our eyes. So as we see with the umpire in this clip here, as he goes out and tracks and chases this fly ball to the outfield, his usage of eyes allows him to go ahead and confirm that process. And many of you guys would probably say that his timing on this one is excellent. And you would be absolutely right. So again, proper use of eyes allows us to process the information of a play, all factors in this case of a catch, ball in the glove, firm and secure possession, and voluntary release before making our signal. So ultimately doing those things is what allows us then to have proper timing and then to display proper judgment. We not only use proper use of eyes on catches, but we can also use it on tag plays and force plays, where again we have to confirm firm and secure possession of the fielder then voluntary release before signaling. So here we have a steal play at third base. Our third base umpire moves into position. He has an out. And then let's go ahead and take a look at the job that he does with his eyes. So the fielder tags the runner here. And then as this play unfolds, what we see this umpire's eyes do is they go straight to the glove right there. They confirm firm and secure possession. And then all of a sudden, our umpire finally then goes into his out call. So just as we saw in the previous clip, 
Our timing comes from proper use of eyes. And our eyes then allow us to intentionally process all the information, all the factors of the play necessary to basically meet then the decision. And we want to make sure we have an opportunity to process that information before we go ahead and come up and make our ruling or make our signal. Not only then do we have proper use of eyes on, on tag plays, on force plays, and on catches, but we also obviously have it as the plate umpire. Here we have a great example of how exactly we use our eyes to track the ball from the pitcher's hand all the way to the catcher's mitt. And I think what many people will say is that when we track the ball the way we should, uh, generally that means that number one, we're probably calling a more accurate strike zone. And that secondly, a benefit of, of proper use of eyes then is the fact that our timing is excellent. Uh, so again, we get good usage of the strike zone. We get good accuracy in our strike zone by tracking the ball from the hand all the way to the mitt. So that's one benefit is a more accurate strike zone. And then secondly, we also then have proper timing. So proper use of eyes then, uh, its product happens to be proper timing. Now what happens when we don't use our eyes properly? Well, we basically, as you see here, lose our timing. So here we have an easy force play at second base. And we just kind of get sped up here. You see the second baseman never really has control of the ball. But as we see, and what was done in the previous clips was our umpires took the time to process the play with their usage of eyes. Here we have an out safe because our umpire didn't necessarily use his eyes properly. So as an evaluator here, anytime we are going to make a comment that says that someone's timing is too quick, what we should really be telling them is that they're not using their eyes properly. This umpire should just confirm firm and secure possession of this baseball before coming into his out call in order then to go ahead and avoid the out safe or even on the plate, as you've probably heard before, the old stee balls. Okay, so proper use of eyes is what gives us our timing to avoid situations such as these. Now, obviously, proper use of eyes is really important. It is going to occur on every single play, every single pitch, every single force play, every single tag play, fair foul. You know, you name the play, we have to use our eyes properly. So how do we practice proper use of eyes? We'll go back to the concept that we mentioned in our first video. We must take advantage of easy plays. And that way, when we take advantage of the easy plays, the ones that are relatively innocuous and boring, we are training ourselves to use our eyes properly so that when things don't go routine, we are defaulting back to that habit of using our eyes properly. So taking advantage of the easy plays is the answer to the question, how do we practice building the habit of proper use of eyes? Here we have, and we saw this clip in the, in the previous video, video number one, uh, a ground ball to the third baseman, which seems like a pretty easy routine play. So again, we're going to default or refer back to those fundamentals. But this throw goes wild. And because of this umpire's proper use of eyes that he had demonstrated on the routine plays, he's able to make an adjustment, get back to the line, and then find his wedge on this tag attempt, and then go back to those same fundamentals to confirm firm and secure possession right there of the baseball on this tag attempt. So not only do the proper use of eyes allow him to make the adjustment on the wild throw, but secondly, he refers back to them uh, to go ahead and confirm firm and secure possession and then go ahead and make his out call. And you can see that his adjustment was spectacular. He had a great look, a great angle at this play. And then secondly, his timing afterwards to go ahead and confirm firm and secure possession. So his adjustment is a product of proper use of eyes and in the habit of proper use of eyes, which confirms firm and secure possession and voluntary release before making his signal is what allows him then to have this proper timing. So how do we know? How can we self-check? How can we self-monitor whether or not we are using our eyes properly? How can we give feedback back to our partners as to whether or not we are using our eyes properly? Well, remember, the greatest source of evidence of us using our eyes properly is found in our timing. And if our timing is excellent, generally what that means is that we are using our eyes properly. So how do we know if we are using our eyes properly? Very simply, evidence of proper use of eyes then is found in our timing. Now, if you've ever heard anyone uh, say any of these two phrases, the play blew up on me or your timing is too fast, generally what this basically means is that we're not using our eyes properly. So for example, if someone says on a force play, a bang bang play at first base, that the play blew up on them, they generally probably didn't get their eyes ahead of the throw fast enough. And that ultimately resulted in the play blowing up on. They basically had rapid eye movement, their eyes weren't set, and it made it difficult for them to perceive or process the information there on that force play at first base. Uh, same is true with tag attempts. If a tag or a play blows up on somebody, it's not necessarily how relatively close they were to the play, but rather they didn't just move their eyes ahead of the play as they should have. 
So anytime someone says the play blew up on you or the play blew up on me, generally what that means is I didn't use my eyes properly, meaning that you didn't get your eyes ahead of the play as you should have on a force or a tag play. Uh, the same is true here if someone tells you that your timing is too fast. If they tell you to give, if they give you some type of false delay tactic, like you know, take a breath or uh, count to one second or whatever it might be, they are they are basically just masking the problem and the root problem here of too quick, of being too fast, or being or having poor timing is that you are not using your eyes properly. So again, uh, if you kind of take a look at these self checks, if you feel like uh, plays are blowing up on you, or secondly that your timing is too fast. Examine your proper use of eyes, and that will give you an answer as to whether or not you're using those eyes properly. Now, as I mentioned, there are several different situations in which we use our eyes properly. The, the most basic, obviously, pitches, every single pitch in a game, every single force play, tag play, uh, fair foul are all great examples of proper use of eyes. But here you've got some more complex ones that require us to, to use our eyes properly, too. And again, it's important to take advantage of the easy plays that way, this is a habit. Proper use of eyes is a habit, not only on pitches and catches and tag plays and force plays, but also on some of these more tougher plays, like a hit by pitch versus a foul ball, whether or not it hit the hand or the bat, for example. A home run versus a ground rule double. Maybe we're reading the reactions of players in addition to the information. Again, proper use of eyes is the intentional processing of information to gather all the information we need before we make a signal or a decision. And then most notably here, a lot of times, uh, proper use of eyes is really important on getting interference and obstruction calls correctly as well. Uh, so this is just a smaller list of where we might see proper use of eyes apply or come up. But again, in, in every situation, in every play that we have on the baseball diamond, it's going to require us to use our eyes properly, which means in order to build that habit, we must take advantage of the routine plays. Now let's take a look here at how exactly proper use of eyes can help us uh, on some of these more um, routine plays and then transition then us into some of these uh, more elaborate or intense plays where we rely on that fundamental of usage of eyes. Here we have a ground ball to the shortstop and I want to focus on our second base umpire. So ground ball to the shortstop with R2 and R3, you see that they're both breaking on the pitch. And here it looks like, you know, the shortstop and our uh, R2, excuse me, R2 and our shortstop are going to come in and potentially have some type of interaction here. Now, the ball does not hit R2. It does not hit R2. It's fielded cleanly and without any problem here by the shortstop. But if you take a look here at our, at our, um, at our umpire, second base umpire, he gives a that's nothing signal, which indicates to us he is using his eyes properly. Okay? that he saw this interaction take place, and he basically said, no, that's nothing. I do not have interference. I do not have obstruction on this play. Take a look here back at the replay. Again, take a look at the second base umpire. Again, this tells us that he's using his eyes properly on what is a routine play. And that way, when a play is more challenging, he has built the habit to use his eyes properly, so he's more inclined to have, number one, good timing, and secondly, is able to make a correct call when all the chips are on the table. Take advantage of the routine plays to build those habits so they're ready for you when something is a little bit more challenging. Now, many of us saw this play. Close Call Sports had a great rules breakdown on it, and I'm not going to go ahead and go back into the rules breakdown on it. But nonetheless, it's a great idea here for us to make sure that we see that getting ruled situations correctly is all dependent upon proper use of eyes. So here, if you remember, this one's from the Kansas City Royals and the Chicago White Sox uh, that came to us on Friday, May 14th. Uh, here we have a pop-up around the dirt circle, uh, and there's a lot that goes on in this play that requires us to process what we see and make sure we, we see what's going on. So, for example, one of the habits that a lot of umpires have is to do exactly what this plate umpire does, and that is to look up at the baseball as it's up in the air. Now, that's okay just as long as we get our eyes back down to the play. Because here in this situation, you can see that both the catcher is going to go try and make a play on this one, and so too is the hitter. So we may have some type of, uh, of interaction or uh, some type of um, uh, you know, collision here by the catcher and by the batter runner. So we need to get our eyes off the baseball, and rather than proper use of eyes, will be then to get it back right to the interaction between these players. And our umpire does peek to see where the ball is. That's necessary because we're going to have fair foul. But secondly here, he's got to get his eyes back on potentially tangle and tangle and any interference or obstruction that may result around the plate. Now here you see our umpires. He, he gets his eyes back off of the baseball and puts his eyes then on the, the catcher and then the batter runner. And what we see here, let's all everybody take a look here at the plate umpire, is just as we saw in the previous clip, 
he rules that that interaction as the batter runner moved around the catcher uh, was uh, not anything. So he basically says that's nothing. That's not interference. It's not obstruction. Uh, so he's going to say that the interaction between the batter runner and the catcher, the, in the, the interaction between the batter runner and the catcher, as we come around to this one, uh, that is what he is signaling as is that is nothing. And he sees that with his proper use of eyes. So he is basically telling everybody on the field that this interaction between the batter runner and the catcher through that uh, that's nothing signal is nothing and that he does not have interference there. Now again, he sees this collision between the first baseman and the batter runner. Now this is the second fielder. Uh, so the, the, cat, the umpire by rule has protected the fielder of the catcher, which means then that he has obstruction on the uh, first baseman here. So the collision then is uh, obstruction. And we're going to know that not only through his proper use of eyes because he sees it, because then he signals it with this point. Okay, so if you see him down on the, on the left side of the screen, he is pointing that's obstruction at this play. And in the ball left in foul territory, that's another proper use of eyes deal where we have fair foul in this situation. And because it was a foul ball uh, and a catch by the catcher, he's also then going to go ahead and signal that the call is out. Okay, so a great job here by our plate umpire to use his eyes properly. Initially, yes, he looks up at the baseball, but then he gets his eyes on this potential interaction between the batter runner and the catcher. Says that that is nothing here. Okay, so there's his that's nothing for interference. And then we'll see him point for that's obstruction. And then lastly, remember, he cleans it up with, an, with a confirmed firm and secure possession by the catcher uh, for a foul catch to go ahead and retire the batter runner. Now, again, this is all a product of proper use of eyes. It's all part then of building the habit of proper use of eyes because this umpire and the umpires that were in these clips uh, took advantage of routine plays to go ahead and build those habits. We want to use it every play, okay? Pitches, tag plays, force outs, catches, whatever the case may be. We want to be diligent and purposeful with our use of eyes so that we build that habit. And that way, when we get something more complex, like we saw in the Kansas City game and the Chicago White Sox game there, that we then have that habit to rely upon. It's evident not only in our timing, but also evident in our ability to go ahead and get calls right. Thank you guys for your attention here in our second video here in our series on the follow-ups to the focal points of 2021, reminding you to, number one, use your eyes properly. Secondly, to go ahead and take advantage of the easy plays and continue to use 2021 as the year to build back a lot of those fundamentals and habits necessary for us to be successful. Thanks for your time and attention. Be on the lookout for the next video.